Hello everyone, in this video, let's learn about Transformer which is introduced by the Attention is All You Need paper from Google. I would like to say the Transformer is the evolution of encoder-decoder architecture. While normal encoder-decoder architecture need RNN, but the Transformer doesn't use RNN. Amazingly, Transformer trains faster and perform better on the machine translation tasks according to the research paper on next slide. As you can see, the transformer achieves better blue score on the English to German and English to French translation with less training time. How the transformer achieved faster train time? This is because the transformer reduced the sequence calculation. The key concept here is the parallelization. Instead of calculating again and again from the beginning to the end of the input, the transformer achieves calculation at once by the parallelization. Let's compare with the traditional RNN based encoder and decoder. When the input is I love you, the traditional encoder should calculate from the state from the I, then calculate the state from the love, then calculate the state U, eventually get the context vector for decoder. And using this context vector, you now can translate it to the Korean language from the decoder part, nan, nol, sarange, until we meet the end signal. This is a traditional RNN based encoder decoder architecture, but this architecture has a drawback that the context vector is a fixed size and cannot store all relevant information if the input is large size. After more researches, we deep learning people achieved a better encoder decoder architecture with attention mechanism but still with the RNN cells. You can think this encoder decoder with attention mechanism which I will show you from the next slide as a just previous version of the encoder decoder before the transformer. So I comes and calculate the state, study comes and calculate the state, at comes and calculate the state, and the school comes and calculate the state. Main difference is coming from here. Using attention mechanism, instead of the fixed size context vector, the architecture can translate comparatively large size more efficiently and also this model takes advantage from the each state of the encoder RNN cell, while the most traditional uh, RNN based encoder do uh, decoder doesn't. But it is still slow due to the RNN's calculation and there are more rooms to improve to improve the performance. Can we remove RNN and just use attention to extract relevant info from the input? Yes, why not? Attention is all you need. Applying attention is just one simple matrix multiplication. You get relevant input info at once without continuous RNN state calculation. You can see the way of decoder working is very similar to RNN encoder decoder architecture with attention algorithm. But we entirely removed the continuous RNN state calculation. Translation starts from the start signal and continue until it output end signal just like the traditional encoder decoder. So, I hope we can understand at this moment that the transformer is actually follows the main concept of encoder and decoder architecture, but improved its time complexity and performance by eliminating RNN and utilizing attention and more state-of-the-art techniques which I will explain later in this video. We know that Word sequence is important in natural language processing. Yes, you are right. And that is why RNN is beloved from the NLP, since RNN captures word sequence very well and perform on NLP tasks successfully. And then, how the transformer handles word order without the RNN strategy? The answer is positional encoding. It is nothing but adding rel rel relative positional information to every input in both encoder and decoder. Here I represented vectors as simple boxes and the box with E is the encoder and the box with D is the decoder. Uh, in this example, I added very simple bitwise positional encoding. For instance, I plus 001, 30 plus 010, at plus 011, and school plus 100. And same strategy applied to the decoder input as well. The research paper uses sine and cosine function. Sine and cosine positional encoding has two main advantages. First, it always have the same range from minus 1 to 1. Secondly, most benefit of the relative positional encoding 
is it can make the positional encoding with any size of the input which is longer than the max length of the train data. After we add positional encoding to word embeddings, the next step is the attention, which is the most key part of the transformer. Let's take a look the attention steps in the encoder, which we call it self-attention, and let's just remember query, key, and values from here. Okay, these query, key, and value are generated by the WQ, WK, WV matrices respectively, and these matrices are just the deep learning weight matrices which are optimized during the training. You see, all input texts are transformed as vector, and the set of input texts are actually matrix X here. Therefore, we can multiply the X with the WQ, WK, WV, and eventually we can get query key values for each input text. So we have all ingredients for self-attention now. Let's keep in mind the query key and values are vectors. Attention score is calculated by the dot product of the query and the transpose of key. We know dot product of vectors results in scalar, and the scalar value is the unnormalized attention score here. In order to get normalized score just like the percentage, we do the softmax with a score divided by the square root of the dimension of the key. According to the research paper, dividing by dimension of the key helps when the dimension of the key is large since the large dimension grows large in magnitude when the dot product. The softmax value is how much the query word should focus on the keyword. For example, word input I should focus on the itself uh, 92%, 5% for the study, 2% for the ad, and 1% for school here. We multiply the softmax result with the value. You can see deemed uh, representation of the softmax uh, times value here. And finally, we sum all softmax times value uh, vectors, and this is the vector representing the word i after self-attention. We can consider this final vector as the word i, including all the relevant information from the input sentence now. You remember, word embeddings are vectors, and the sentence as input is a matrix, so we can get attention layer output at once by matrix multiplication. This is the power of the parallelization. The research paper actually utilizes parallelization more, just like Ensemble. The transformer uses eight identical parallel attention layers. I describe it with only three identical parallel attention layers in this slide. Here, the reference is from the uh, J. Alamas blog. Multi-head attention helps a lot on translation, just like this example. Uh, the word it here is ambiguous and you see two different attention actually focus on the different words animal and the street which makes sense and encode this hidden information to, into uh, embedding. This means the parallel attention layer can complement each other just like the ensemble. Here is the bird eye view of the encoder. Input converted as a word embedding and positional encoding applied. And then, it goes multi-head attention layer, the output of the multi-head attention concatenated and multiplied by the another weight matrix to make the same vector size of the original input word embedding. The output of the attention layer independently goes each fully connected layer, and importantly, each output vector dimension still has the same size of the input vector dimension. You remember, we added a positional encoding on word embedding. During the backpropagation, we may lose the positional encoding, so the transformer has residual connection followed by the layer normalization in order to effectively keep the positional encoding and stable the training. This is the encoder layer of transformer, but you know what? I wonder if you remember the output vector's dimension of the encoder layer is exactly the same with the input vector's dimension. That means the output can go can again go to the another encoder layers. Yeah, we can stack encoder layers and it helps actually. 
The transformers take six identical encoder layers. Remember, encoder layers are identical, but they don't share their weights. The final encoder output is actually the output of the six encoder layer here. So we are done for the encoder now. Let's talk about the decoder. We are almost there. You see, the decoder is very similar to encoder in this board I view. Decoder also have identical six stack of the layers. The decoder generates one word at a time from the left to the right. The decoder layers attend the previously generated words of the decoder and the final output of the encoder. See? You see how decoder translate how I study at school in Korean language now? You remember, this is the architecture of one encoder layer. Let's simplify it to compare with the decoder. You now can see the encoder has a multi-head attention fit for the layer and the residual connection here. Decoder has very similar architecture, but the difference is First, the first multi-head attention is masked multi-head attention. The masked multi-head attention is nothing but to prevent future words to be part of the attention. And the next part is the multi-head attention. The difference from encoder is here keys and values are from encoder's final output and the queries are from the decoder. This is like asking to encoder that, hey, I'm decoder and I currently have these translated words, which input words should I focus from you encoder output? And just same as the encoder, the final layer is fit for to generate final output vector. So we still talk about the vectors, how we convert the final decoder vector into the world. In order to do that, we have linear layer and softmax layer. Linear layer is to generate logic for softmax and the softmax gives probability to all vocabularies. Last but not least, the transformer from the research paper uses label smoothing for labels. You can see from this slide that the labels is not one hot encoding representation due to the label smoothing. Label smoothing gives less than one value to target and a greater than zero value for other values. So you can think this is label regularization. This has the advantage of the preventing the pursuit of hard probabilities without discouraging correct classification. It helps when your label is noisy. And the machine translation labels are normally noisy. Here noisy label means uh, you may have two different labels for same train data. For example, thank you can have two different labels like in Korean language, gomawa or kamsamida. Both are correct label. By reducing the gap between the softmax output and the labels, the model can stabilize learning from noise labels. This is it. And here are the references I read for this video. Tons of thanks to all authors of research paper and all bloggers sharing the data uh, idea. Thanks for watching and I really hope this video helps you understand attention is all you need paper. I will see you on next video. Thank you.